Welcome back, gumshoes, to the world of 1940s hard-boiled detective novels. This is Let's Get On With It Deja Vu 2, Lost in Las Vegas, the final game of the McVenture series, and the only one not to be featured on my channel. Until now. For those of you who have forgotten or simply didn't know, the McVentures, originally developed on the Apple Macintosh, are all menu-based point-and-click adventure games. I gushed over the influence and novelty of the McVenture design in my first Deja Vu series, but uh, it's worth noting that short of when I played Uninvited on a Windows port, we haven't really had the experience of playing these games like they were originally designed, so for this series, we're going to be playing the Macintosh version. See? It's a Mac, 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 it's a Mac! It's a Mac. Now, while every port of this game, and that's true for all the McVentures, has color, it's worth noting that the originals are in black and white. I see that as more authentic, really, because we all know color wasn't invented until the 1950s. How could we possibly get into the role of Ace Harding, infamous detective and prize fighter, if we saw the world in color? Clearly, the NES port I played at the original was faulty because of this, but on the bright side, it did have music. Um... This is a note, there is no NES port of Deja Vu 2. It was talked about, and you could probably find some sort of unreleased, uh, like, pre-copy thing on the internet, but I think uh, it was ultimately decided not to release that cartridge due to the fact that Nintendo was waning in popularity, and I think uh, I think that was made in 1992, or it was, it was in the process of being made there. Um... I guess another thing I should do is actually drag my Deja Vu disc. There we go. Ta-da! So what's the story? Uh, the game's set a short time after the ending of the first, when Ace Harding, that's us, regained her memory and proved our innocence in the murder of Joe Siegel. Unfortunately, Siegel owed a bunch of money to a mafia boss by the name of Tony Malone, and Ace has regrettably become the scapegoat. We've only got a limited amount of time to come up with the cash, otherwise it's quitting for us. So, no color, there's no music either, there are a few sound effects, but I've noticed that has a tendency of glitching my modern computer system, so I have sound disabled. So, just us, and the game, and its spiffy cool uh, interface. Let's get started, shall we? Good evening, welcome to Deja Vu 2, Lost in Las Vegas. You wake up from a stupor that feels like a chronic hangover after a wild week in Vegas. That sounds like Ace. There is a throbbing bump on the back of your head. As you come out of the fog... Oh, let me deal with something here. I deactivated my internet connection to do this, so... you can, I could actually connect to the internet on this thing, but I decided to disable that. Heaven forbid an obsolete virus get onto my computer through the freaking Macintosh. And corrupt my game! <laughs> uh, you come out of the fog, you breathe a sigh of relief as you realize that you still know your own moniker, Ace Harding, because we woke up in a bathroom in the first game and we couldn't remember who we were. With that, the events of the previous 48 hours start to float back. You recall being abducted from Chicago by two thugs, who then brought you to their boss, Tony Malone, the notorious Las Vegas mobster. According to word on the street, there had been some kind of connection between Mo Malone and Joey Siegel, the racketeer of whose murder you had recently been cleared. As you discovered last night, Siegel had been running rackets in Chicago as Malone's leg man, and his untimely demise left 112000 of Malone's money unaccounted for. And since you are the logical scapegoat, Malone has now made you an offer you can't refuse. Either cough up his hundred and twelve grand in one week's time, or it'll be the classic or else for you, Coitons. And just to make sure you don't get any funny ideas, you'll be watched closely by Stogie Martin, Malone's personal torpedo. Are we on a submarine? What? You stand up. Boy, are your legs wobbly. Your head hurts. Where's the Alka-Seltzer when you need it? It's also worth noting that this game, along with all the other MacVenture games, are time-based. You only have so much time to uh, solve the mystery before bad things happen to you. In this case, I think you have a decent amount of time in this game, but uh, <laughs> Lord knows you need it. Deja Vu 2 requires so much lateral thinking. 
on the basis of so little knowledge, I don't think the game gives you enough information. It really makes shit uh, difficult to do. Also, while I'm here, go ahead and save the game. I should have like a test save that I made. No? Yeah, I did. I made a test save. But apparently, well, I'm saving the game, so I obviously can't save over the test. I gotta think back to <laughs> whenever this game was made, the system for which it was made on. So we'll just call this, let's get on with it. We'll save the game here. Okay, so I have a bunch of commands. We have our spiffy cool inventory system. And you can see the actual interface of the Macintosh in the back, if you'll allow me to minimize that. That's kind of annoying. So let's get back into the game. <laughs> I know it looks like it's just an application and not an actual game. Fucking innovative! Let's go ahead and increase the size of our inventory window here. And rather than cycle through a bunch of, you know, D-pad bullshit or typing out a bunch of commands, I can just click and drag. Uh, the first thing that I do want is my pants. So let's get some pants on. Put the pants in the inventory. And it's your pair of gray pants, which will look about as bad as you feel. Let's operate the pants. The pair of pants fits you well. Now let's open up our pants. We have a wallet here that I want out of my basic inventory, and I have a key here as well. The key... Oh, pff, shit, I accidentally examined my inventory. But I'm wearing a pair of pants. That's a good thing. That's the brass key to our apartment, and that's a wallet which we're going to play around with later. True to any sort of adventure game, there's a bunch of things that you can do, a bunch of examination you can do, which is not necessary to the completion of the game. But I do want to give you guys a bunch of flavor and stuff, so... I'm not going to try to beeline straight for the end. Besides, I don't exactly remember this game that well. So, uh, I played it within the past year and a half. Uh, in the event that I would do a series on this, but, uh... <laughs> memory is kind of gone, and we saw what happened whenever... <laughs> my memory went in Shadowgate. <laughs> Good times, Hugh Dawson's fucking screaming. No, it's Catfish who was screaming at me. Yeah. At any rate, what is this? Oh shit, I didn't mean to click on that. This. It's an empty bottle of scotch. Preferred poison of PIs everywhere. Nice. What do we got going on here? You stare into the mirror and see yourself. Ace Harding, second-rate detective. Your haggard face reminds you of the nightmarish time when you couldn't remember your own name and you were charged with the murder of Joey Siegel, the owner of Joe's Bar in Chicago. Good times. Good times. Now, we don't need the coat. Fuck it. I don't feel like grabbing the coat. <laughs> we can open the coat. Anything interesting in there? Ooh. A pack of Lucky Strikes. Lucky Strikes mean fine tobacco. Well, serious business is happening this week, so I probably shouldn't mess around with smokes. I, I know it's defying the traditional uh, appearance of your hard-boiled detective novel. In your hard-boiled detective novel, but whatever. Double click the door? I know, I can just double click it. GTFO. You're in a cheap, messy hotel room. But then again, who's complaining? You feel an ominous tap on your shoulder. Turning rapidly, you see this ape wearing a suit. Just remember, pal. I, I, I don't think I can do one of, the, one of those voices. <laughs> I can't do it without, like, a Looney Tunes mock. <laughs> it's quitting for you. <laughs> I want to do him like he's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Just remember, pal. I can't even do that. <laughs> Maybe I can just give him a gruff, tough voice. Just remember, pal. <laughs> now he sounds like he's African American. <laughs> Not black, African American. Oh, yes, of course. I took the easy way out. Uh... <laughs> Damn, they quit the focus. Just remember, pal. He growls. Just remember, pal. Now he sounds like Dr. Claw. Damn it. <laughs> I can't do I should have thought of a voice. I knew that we'd be meeting uh, this ape man here, but I didn't think of a good voice for him. Just remember, pal. He growls. Whoa, just remember, pal. <laughs> now he's Ted Theodore Logan. Just remember, pal. He growls. I got instructions to keep an eye on you. I would. <laughs> wow, that accent was going nowhere good. <laughs> Got instructions to keep an eye on you. I wouldn't get too many bright ideas if I was you. 
He then disappears through the hotel room door. All right, Pixel Hunt, are you ready? Go. No, just kidding. Oh, well, you, we do need a few things from this room, but... So let's take a look around the bedroom. First off, mirror. Good, we still look the same. What else we have here? Uh, the wastebasket is the cleanest item of the joint? Damn. You're a cheap, messy hotel room, but then again, who's complaining? Let's look at the bed. You notice that the bed is covered with some real tacky fabric? We don't want any of that. Uh, let's go ahead and open up this nightstand here. <laughs> oh, a Bible! <laughs> it's a Gideon's Bible. Nice. You turn to the book of Exodus and read the Ten Commandments. You wonder if Tony Malone ever bothered to do the same. <laughs> We've got um, two items, though, that we're going to want. First off is this little pixel down here. It's a cigar ring, which uh, Stogie Martin dropped, and he should really quit smoking. We want that, so let's get it. I said let's get it. The next thing we want is, well, let's check out the dresser. Anything inside anything here? No figures. Next thing we want is this right here. A folded train schedule. We're going to want that. So let's put that in our inventory, and wearing our pair of pants, let's get the hell out. Well, well first, let's, let's, let's save here. Let, let's do one of these whole just-in-case save things that I did for the Trilby Quadrilogy. Let's take off the pair of pants and walk out. As you stand in this well-lit hotel lobby, you can hear the sounds of gambling in the distance. The hotel room door slams shut. For your information, wandering around public places in the nude is against local ordinances regarding decency in just about every state in the Union. You are roughly escorted out. Pro tip, put on a pair of pants before you leave the hotel room. God help you if you didn't grab the pants. Uh, Stogie Martin actually comments about your underwear. <laughs> yeah, that's not something we want to have, have happen. So, no, no save changes, just in case. I made a test game just to see that this would actually, you know, my setup would run fine. Let's go ahead and, uh, my pair of pants is still on, right? Good, 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 good. Let's go ahead and get out. Hotel room door slams shut because, of course, I closed it behind me. You know, makes sense, right? Right? All right, so, next up, we have a bunch of places we can go and look at. Uh, the McVentures tend to be infamous for, Hey, we got so many places you can go and check out in Deja Vu too. <laughs> oh yeah, you can get yourself screwed over in so many different locations. It's great. Uh, but uh, let's take a look around this place here. Well, we already know how this place looks. Let's take a look at a plant. It's a leafy plant, but not a java plant, if that's what you're wondering. Okay. It's a tacky but ornate light fixture, usually found in cheap hotels, like this one. So we're in a cheap hotel, right? These elevator doors, by Otis, of course, must have been painted recently. They reek! And there's casino doors, we're gonna go through those. You can hear casino sounds. Clinking silver coins, clicking plastic chips, slot machine bells, and people cheering. Folks, if you did not watch the first series, uh, you, you did not learn that Ace Harding in addition to being an ex-prize fighter and uh, second-rate detective, is also addicted to gambling. <laughs> we are actually going to be engaging in some of those nice actions. It's a painting of the legendary Wilton McDonald's shootout. They say that a wily con man tricked the two friends into shooting each other over a silver mine. This would make a great movie, you mumble to yourself. So, let's go this way. And here's the cashier's cage of the Lucky Dice Casino. A blonde in a cage. What a good idea! Why didn't you think of that? <laughs> I don't remember all the various places you can look at for the laugh, so I'm just going to click around randomly and do stuff. The sign courteously, courteously reminds you to please count your change. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open my wallet here and uh, check out some stuff. We've got a few items in here. We've got a quarter. I think, I think those are three $10 bills, but I don't exactly remember. It's a saw buck. And this one's a $1 bill. Oh, oh. We have much less money than what I thought we had. So $12.25. Over here is our driver's license. Oh, Theodore Harding. <laughs> That's his name. 
1060 uh, West Addison Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. We've got here a, uh, a faded newspaper clipping showing you in a boxing ring with Rudy Kowalski, your old sparring partner. Cool. We've got, as I said, some people call it a quarter. You call it your lucky two-bit piece. And it's a fairly recent newspaper clipping with the headlines, Ace Clears Name, Private Eye Turns Tables at Last. It mentions the address of Joe's Bar, where Joey Siegel was murdered. 1060 South Peoria Street, Chicago, Illinois. Okay. We want to give our lady friend here some money. Excuse me. My throat's making some weird shit today, or making some weird sounds. <laughs> give that lady a saw buck, and uh, we're going to take our chips. I said we're going to take... I said we're going to take... Uh, fine. You know what? Screw you. you. You don't want to do my whole super cool, awesome drag thing today? Fine. Whatever. We won't do it then. I'll take my two chips. We're going to head off into Casino Wonderland. Wonderland. You're at a blackjack table. Nothing like a game of blackjack, says the dealer. Is that so? Your name is Alvin Crashkopf. That's cool. That's not who we're looking for. You're at a blackjack table. I've been running cold all night, pal. Now's your chance, says the dealer. Your name is Curly Schultz. Hmm. I don't think I can trust you, Curly. Here we have a slot machine room. Woo! Slot machines. Fuck it. We're not doing with that. You're at a blackjack table. The dealer says, you look like a man born to win. Well, how about that? Your name says, your name tag says Rudy Kowalski. Well, shit, that sounds familiar. Open our wallet here. Hey, what do you know? I bet that's Rudy Kowalski. What happens if we show him this clipping here? Oh, that was dumb. Operate the uh, <laughs> the clipping here on the man. He winked at us. Rudy glances at the newspaper clipping. Recognition appears on his face, and he gives you a knowing wink. It looks like your luck has changed, pal. Fantastic. So, how about we put a chip down on the table, and let's see some action. Your hand consists of an eight of diamonds and a five of hearts. The total for your hand is 13. Now, there are multiple ways to do this. You can hit self, or you can speak to the man. Hit. Oh, my total's 20. I think that's pretty good. Let's just go ahead and speak. Stand. Yeah, we win! Woo! We win! Let's go ahead and bet again. Yay! Your hand consists of a seven of clubs and a six of spades. The total for your hand is 13. Hit self. Total for your hand is 14. Hit self. Your hand consists of a seven of clubs, a six of spades, an ace of clubs, and a five of diamonds. The total for your hand is 19. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and drag a chip there. We stand. Up, oh, hand is 17. We win again. Shiggity, shiggity, schwa. Let's do that again. Your hand consists of a four of clubs and a queen of diamonds. The total for your hand is 14. Hit me. Total for your hand is 19. I'm good. Let's, uh, no, operate the table. I should be, ah, oh, hit the table. That's right, I forgot. Oh, 24. We win again. Nice. And we win. As I said, Rudy is nervous. His pit boss is watching. He gets the signal to take a break. He gives you a wink and a smile as he leaves the table. Okay. I got to make sure I do this right. I got to make sure I do this right. I only have so much time to drag off, drag away all these chips. And I know there's a way for me to drag multiple things on. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and save the game here, just in case. Just to make sure I don't lose my chips. Because he'll fucking take the chips if you take too long. And you don't have enough time to drag away each and every single individual chip. So, let's go ahead and drag one. And that should put us in the son of a bitch. I know I can do this. Don't you lie to me, game. Hold on, I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back. Alright, I went ahead and loaded the game here. As it turns out, uh, I did some testing. I can't believe this worked. Shift! <laughs> no, it doesn't! 
I thought holding down the shift key would work. <laughs> oh, goodness. I feel like a little noob now. Shit. I read that in the instruction manual. I'm not a noob. It's not my fault. Let me pause again. Hmm. I had this whole stack move a little bit, but, uh... I guess I can just show you what happens whenever you take too long. And... Swipe! Sorry, pal, I warned you that you were taking too long, the dealer says. His hand becomes a blur as he takes your chips. House rules, you know. You son of a bitch. Open. I want all those chips. I will have all of those chips. I am hungry. You can't take that away from me. No... Just in case, yet another pause. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I should have figured out the multiple item selection first. I swear to God, I know how to do this. I can play this game. I can play this game! <laughs> it says I can do this. Hold shift, select one chip, and all of them are supposed to follow. They did. Hold shift, press select, they all didn't move. Is it not recognizing me pressing the shift key? It's possible it's not recognizing me press the shift key. But... This recognizes me pressing it. Hmm... Next time on Let's Get On With The Deja Vu 2, Lost in Las Vegas. <laughs> I will have all of these chips in my inventory, you bastard. They will be mine.